ASEAN highlight this week, we recap the release of 96 Ahmadi Pakistanis from the Immigration Detention Center in Bangkok on Monday, reflecting on the implication of this new development on other groups of refugees in Thailand, as well as the plight of the Ahmadiyya in Southeast Asia. The release of 96 Pakistanis Ahmadiyya on bail from the detention at the Immigration Detention Center in central Bangkok this week came as a result of coordinated work between Thai civil society groups and the immigration authority. Thailand Committees for Refugees Foundation in particular played a central role in setting up the Refugee Freedom Fund that facilitates the bailing and other legal processes involved in the release of the Ahmadis after their six months of living in overcrowded cells of the Suen Plu IDC. The Thai Committee for Refugee Foundation, which is a foundation register in Thailand, should come up with a fund that would uh, bail the refugees, because that is the only way that we can do in the short term. And therefore, through TCR, we set up Refugee Freedom Fund and use this fund to bail all the 96 Ahmadi as the first group of the refugees. There are still other refugees who are still in the detention center that will be our next group that we would uh, try to get their release. According to the UN Refugee Agency, Thailand, who is not a member of the 1951 UN Convention and the 1967 Protocol regarding the status of refugees, currently has 3.5 million stateless persons, over 105,000 refugees and over 10,000 asylum seekers residing within its border. Despite these staggering numbers, refugee issues are not well discussed in the mainstream Thai political and public discourses. Government policies related to refugees in the country is largely shaped by security concerns and international relations. The Monday release of the Ahmadiyya thus offer a glimmer of hope for other groups of refugees currently in detention by the Thai authority because according to the Thai Committee for Refugees as well as other Thai civil society groups, they will assist others in the future as well as campaigning for the establishment of a refugee law in Thailand. The prosecution of the Ahmadiyya is not an exclusive occurrence that happened in Pakistan. Founded in India in the 19th century, the Ahmadiyya faces prosecution and discrimination in many parts of the world because some do not recognize Ahmadiyya as a legitimate branch of Islam. In Indonesia, Islamic hardliners violently attacked and killed the Ahmadiyyas in recent times. According to the Human Rights Watch, the Indonesian government policy towards the Ahmadiyya has contributed to the discrimination by hardliners. The government has passed in 2008 a national decree banning proselytizing by the Ahmadiyya. Uh, and that has now been reinforced by a number of provincial decrees, including provincial decrees in East Java and West Java, two of the most populous uh, provinces of Indonesia. And there's a lot of discussion led by the Minister of Religious Affairs, who's supposed to be supporting religious tolerance, but in fact is doing the opposite, uh, calling for a ban on the Ahmadiyya. And our view is that if such a ban went forward, it would be like painting a target on the Ahmadiyya's chests. According to the Indonesian scholar, Dr. Azumadi Azra, Islamic hardliners like the Front Pambela Islam or FPI attacked the Ahmadiyya in order to gain public support from other hardliners who considered the sect as a deviation from Islamic belief. This is no different from the FPI attacks on nightclubs and other targets they see as a generator of social ills that tarnish their religion. Uh, groups like FBI uh, uh, have appeal for a certain uh, group of Muslims uh, because they appeal, for instance, for the uh, war against social ills like drug, gambling, prostitution. Uh, and of course, uh, these issues are very uh, popular uh, among, you know, uh, among people. So they use this and also they take issue on deviant groups of Islam, deviant group of Muslim like the Ahmadiyyas, for instance. They take this issue and then this issue is very popular and then uh, they use and abuse uh, certain verses of the Quran, for instance, in order for them to strengthen uh, their arguments or their violence against uh, the so-called deviant groups of Islam like the Ahmadiyya and some other deviant groups among, among Muslims. 
The plight of the Ahmadiyya is only a part of a bigger story of prosecutions and discrimination that causes people to flee their homeland in search for a brighter future. Perhaps through the promotion of understanding between people at the root causes of these discrimination and prosecution will in some way help reduce the number of refugees around the world. Apart from refugees, Thailand also hosted many migrant workers, some legal, some illegal, and majority of them are from Burma. Currently, there are more than 300,000 Burmese migrants work in the seafood industry in Thailand. In this next story, RCN TV, through the collaboration with a Burmese journalist, takes a look at the plight of the Burmese migrant workers, as well as the NGO that was set up to assist them and their families. At the busy seaport of Mahashai in Samut Sakhon province, Burmese migrant workers sort and sell shrimp for processing at seafood factories throughout Thailand. Many of these workers are illegal, but they can earn much more money here than in their home country if they are willing to take the risks. Migrants work mainly in sectors such as fisheries, uh, such as manufacturing, uh, such as construction work. Uh, these are the, the sectors called 3D uh, jobs. They are dangerous, they are dirty. Thai people simply don't want to do them anymore. The dangers became all too apparent in April when a truck full of Burmese workers crashed, killing seven of them. So Niang's niece of Ma Win Ma was among them. Twenty-three-year-old Saza Wu was injured in the accident and her father was killed. Her grief-stricken mother worries about how the family will survive as they are yet to receive any compensation for the husband's death. <laughs> More than 300,000 Burmese migrant works in seafood industry in Thailand. Many live in cramped neighborhoods like this, nicknamed Little Burma. At least half are not registered to work in Thailand, and without legal documents, they have no health care, few rights such as workers' compensation, and are vulnerable to trafficking and police harassment. Som Pong Sakgao founded a labor rights promotion network in 2004 to promote the rights of migrant workers and their families. ตัวการทํางานของเอ่อ <coughs> But there's a long way to go, and in the meantime, workers like So Niang are prepared to endure being treated like second class citizens. <laughs> And until there are more opportunities, thousands more Burmese will risk life, limb, and being illegal in the hope of a better life. That's it for this edition of RCN Highlight. On behalf of our news team at Thai News Agency, I hope you all have a lovely weekend and Swadikrab.